All right, right here with uh, John Molina Jr. Uh, tell me how uh, training camp's going, man. How you feeling? Uh, it's going really well. Uh, working hard. We've been to the gym. Uh, we haven't really had a, a day off of the gym, so we feel good. Feeling like we picked up right where we left off, and just excited to get back in the ring. Right. So, uh, what can you tell us about the the next date and uh, and all that? On uh, November fourteenth, uh, we find again. Our location will be uh, to be announced. Uh, so we're getting ready for that. Excited about it. Uh, and like I've been just excited to go out there and, and put on a show for the fans. Yeah, definitely. You always do, man. Um, and then, uh, so going into 2016, are you looking at like a title shot maybe? Who are you looking at going after uh, 2016? I've always had my sights set on Omar Figueroa. I think it's the most explosive fight at 140 right now. Um, given the, you know, where everyone's at. I believe stylistically it's a great fight for the fans and it'll make for another fight of the year. No, definitely. That'd be a great, great, definitely and, and a that's not, fight. that's not taking anything away from Omar Figueroa. He's a great fighter. I just think our styles... Uh, like styles make fights and I think that's fits perfect for myself and Omar Figueroa. No, definitely. I mean, that, that would fit perfect for the fans too, man. Definitely, that'd yeah. Be, uh, that'd be a great fan. Uh, hopefully that would happen here in LA. Do you, do uh, you have any idea? I would love to have it at StubHub. I mean, I think that's, that's the mecca of a fight of the year fights all the time. Everyone knows that. StubHub always produces great fights. Maybe it's something in the air. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you yourself have been in uh, fight of the year uh, fights there with uh, Lucas Matisse. Yeah, uh, that was a hell of a fight. Uh, Lucas fought a hell of a fight that fight. And, it was an honor to, to be recognized in the record books for fight of the year 2014. Definitely, man. What do you think about uh, his last fight against Postal and uh, and maybe getting a shot at Postal? How do you feel about how do you feel fair against that fight? I, I think uh, you know Matisse is Matisse, and it's hard for me you know to say that oh well, he did this or did that. I can't critique him because the guy did beat me. Uh, he did defeat me in a fight of the year, and, and he had to show a lot of uh, guts and glory to come back from the fight. Now we don't know what was going on in his head that fight with Postal, um, but you can't take it away from Postal. He's a hell of a fighter, and he did what he had to do, and he did what everyone didn't think he was going to be able to do, which is stop Lucas Matisse. Personally, I felt like he had a lot more to not uh, get up against when he fought me. But that being said, you know, I think me and Postal will be a different fight because I'm not five seven, I'm five ten and a half. Postal, I believe, is five eleven. I think. It would, the trouble that he gave somebody with the distance would uh, be nullified with some of my height. Yeah, no, definitely. You're, you're, you're right up there with the height with him. Um, another big fight in the 140-pound division uh, coming up, Terrence Crawford. Uh, how do you think he'd fare against uh, Crawford, man? Uh, Crawford's a hell of a fighter. Uh, he was fighter of, the, fighter of the year, I believe, last year. And uh, like I said, the way his claim to fame was he had to go to 40, 140, I believe, to fight Brady Prescott, who's a, a big puncher, and he handled him... Uh, pretty easily and it showed who he really was but if you ask Mikey Garcia who he said who the best fighter was and he said Terrence Crawford before anyone knew who Terrence Crawford was and uh, I believe Mikey actually lost him in the amateurs so uh, Terrence Crawford the hell of a fighter I think that'd be a great fight uh, right now he, he is uh, a hell of a fighter at 140 Definitely. and uh, rightfully so uh, all the accolades and everything he's accomplished uh, he deserves them because he, he is a great fighter and uh, we've got some good boxing coming up uh, this weekend. Uh, who are you picking between Golovkin and Lemieux? You know, every, everyone says uh, Triple G's going to win. Personally, if I'm betting, you know, anyone could be wrong. I was dead wrong about Victor Polso and Lucas Matisse. I thought, personally, Matisse was going to get him out of there within seven rounds, four to seven rounds. On this fight right now, I believe both men have real power. I believe both men have holes in their armor, but I believe Lemieux has the bigger holes in the armor, and I believe the, the amateur pedigree bodes well for Triple G as opposed to Lemieux. So I think uh, with the bombs that will be landing, I'm going to go with Triple G and knock out by the seventh round. Right, and um, one of the biggest fights of the year coming up, Cotto versus uh, Canelo. How do you see that going down? I'm a big fan of Cotto, but uh, right now I think they picked on Cotto at the right time. Yeah, he looked good against his last outings, but with that being said, Canelo is the true 154 pounder. He's the bigger man, so to speak, being at that weight longer. We've got to remember, Cotto had some of his best years at 140, so he's coming up to that weight. And he's a little longer in the tooth, a little older, and his reflexes are not what they used to be. So with that being said, I'm going to go with Canelo, uh, possibly even stopping Cotto. And that's not saying I don't like Cotto. I think he's a hell of a fighter. I just think the age difference would be a big factor in that fight. Definitely. Well, hey, uh, you know, good luck in your fight coming up this year. And uh, as a fight fan, we definitely hope you got that Omar Figueroa fight. Yeah, too. definitely. Thank you guys for uh, following and stay tuned.